Hello, everyone. With several of you in person, and uh, those of you who are out there in uh, the internet land, uh, I'm Dan Gottsagen. I was the artist chosen to design this piece for the Memorial Valley Rail Trail trailhead here in Hyde Park. So, this first slide is something that people on the committee saw when I did the initial presentation. I just wanted to repeat this one slide again which is just basically what the concept is of the piece. So the, the piece is supposed to announce Hyde Park. It's supposed to be a destination artwork. That means that people can use it actually to locate themselves on the trail as a meeting place, so on and so forth. So it, it really becomes a place that people come to as a destination. Um, by the way, I was just sitting down at the trail for a few minutes before coming up here. And the amount of bicycle traffic on that trail is considerable. So it would be something in that way. Um, some of the considerations in doing it is that we place the piece in the way that we get the best view and the best viewing angles. I've spent some time at the site citing it for that. It should be luminous and colorful and also eye-pleasing. The imagery will be varied enough to be interesting, but not too busy, I hope, more than just a pattern. Although you'll read it from a distance, it'll read differently close up. Um, and the other thing is that I want it to be entertaining to not just adults, but kids as well. Elements of it that are specifically to engage younger people so that families who have kids, the kids, I could see the little kids even saying, I want to go see the, the glass piece with the cool stuff in it. So, and the other thing is I wanted to include artwork by students of the High Park Elementary School. And I'll say a little bit more about that. You'll see I have two in here. School hadn't started because my design deadline was September 1st. So uh, this is, I'm hitting the down arrow and nothing's happening. All right, so is that number two? Okay, should we? So this is a lot of information. This is the kind of research I did to develop this. I spent some months doing a lot of research, a bunch of visits up here, talking to a lot of people. I read a couple of histories of Hyde Park. I looked at collections of historic photos of Hyde Park. I learned about and read about the history of the, act, the, the rail trail itself and the railroad that was there before. I met Paul from Sterling View. And, um, and I also talked with Randall Hill, who I hope is now viewing. His grandparents actually lived in the Hyde Park Railroad Depot and his father worked for the railroad. And he gave me access to many family photos that were really, it's a treasure trove. So I talked to the people from Vast and they gave me access to their photos. I talked to the friends of the Memorial Valley Rail Trail. They gave me access to family photos. I talked to folks from River Arts, from the Lamoille County Players at the Opera House, and I'm actually using some photos that they gave me access to. I also talked to representatives of the Abenaki Nation, uh, Chief Don Stevens and Francine Blue Dancing Wolf, of the, of the band that is local to here. And I did, came up and did some art activities with students from the Hyde Park Elementary School during the summer. And uh, I bicycled the entire length of the trail, both directions out and back, and photographed it. Um, and then I came up for a couple of social events here in Hyde Park and talked to people there. And then I've driven all around the environment. So I've done a fair amount of research. And this is uh, it just elevation view of what the structure will look like. Um, this is very similar to what I showed in the initial design meeting. Um, there are fewer panels per section, partly for uh, largely for aesthetic reasons, and uh, also for cost reasons. And initially the panels were longer, but I've decreased them in size to create the most flowing aesthetic I could. Um, obviously, this form is designed to mimic the weaving railroad tracks. So the the bars are will be a black steel frame. Um, there are five sections, as you saw, each each with 
four glass panels. So there are five separate paintings that interrelate, divided each into four sections. Um, each section panel is each equal size. So each panel will be 12 inches across and 34 inches long, creates the best flow. I tried multiple sizes to get it to work. Um, I've considered two plan views, one that's just a zigzag and another one, you'll see those in a second, which I think is the best, which is basically two Vs with a flat section in the middle. The height of the lower rail is eight feet. Okay, we could make it higher. Um, and this is what it will look like. Can you guys see it up there? You can get closer if you want to. So uh, to understand this, there are, so from a distance, you just see all this vibrant color. The leftmost image, the left four is, um, so it's four seasons and then high park in the middle. So, oh, I can use this. So, so this left section, if you see my little red dot there, that is autumn. And those are images of Hyde Park, some bicyclists, the river, you can see a bear in there. And there's actually also a drum that's an historic Abenaki drum. I think it's so small here. There's also a bald eagle flying across there. Okay, you're gonna see details of these. So you'll see them more closely. The next one to the left is the winter view. So it's got various animals, the train, people doing winter recreational sports on the trail, including snowshoeing, snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, et cetera. I'm gonna skip the center one for the second one. The second from the right is springtime, and that shows uh, the river again, locomotives, Green River Reservoir. There's a, there's a uh, loon in there, a moose, and also uh, an image of Chief Don Stevens, who is the, the chief of the Abenaki, this band. And also before him, there is the image of, of Randall Hill as a young boy on a hand, two, two cycle, single cylinder railroad car they would travel with his father on. Um, and then the right one, oh, that, that's, a map, that's actually a wood duck. And then the right one, or a, a teal rather, the right one has the loon, a photo of somebody bicycling on the trail. It's a Hyde Park person. Actually, I met on the trail while I was cycling. He was cycling with his wife, a person riding horse on the trail. Uh, there's a scarlet tanager in there. There's a river otter, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the images of the, all the images of the, of the river itself are pretty much photos I took one of a couple of these are from a place that's Michelle's favorite place on the trail. Um, and uh, the other thing I should say about the animals is the animals that are sacred animals to the Abenaki are also represented here. So the moose, particular the moose, which is in Chief Don Stevens' headdress, but that actually represents the pileated woodpecker. There's a pileated woodpecker in the winter image. And then the, um, and then the uh, turtle, which is in the center image, which is Hyde Park, which one is the one I'm really, really nuts about. So let's go to the talk about this a little bit. So what you're seeing here, what I'm about to show you in detail, they're the Photoshop designs of the paintings. I take the images, I pull them together, I paint on them in Photoshop but there's a limit to what I can do in Photoshop. I can't make a painting. So the actual paintings, and you saw this in the Waterbury piece, they're just gonna have much more fluidity, more flow, more connection, more color nuance. There's a kind of magic that happens in the studio and painting the paintings, and I just can't do that in the, on the computer. They're gonna seem less busy, they get simpler. You know, I can, so you have to be trusted on that. There will be realism, obviously, but there will also be elements of painterly flow that seem more abstract. I can enhance the color and I can make color connections between the paintings that I couldn't do in Photoshop. So they'll feel less dislocated. They'll all flow together a little bit more. So I already mentioned a while about what the imagery are. You know, it's historic photos, Photos downloaded by permission, except for one in the winter photo, which is a placeholder. Photos that 
people submitted to me and I took in the area. Some families told me they were going to send me family photos. If they haven't yet, I'm going to substitute those potentially for what I have here. So um, I want to get more artwork from the high school, the elementary school kids. I came up a couple times this summer. I got two pieces that I've incorporated already. This morning, Callie sent me six more. <laughs> which are fantastic, but it was too late for me to include them. And I may come up again in the fall and do more. The other piece I want to say about this and I, is there's something happening at River Arts, and I want to include the elementary school kids in that too. I think that would be super cool. So there'll be more of that. Seasonal photos that are not summertime, because I was doing this our summer, were the ones I found online. So what I want to do, you know, if we go forward, is come up in the fall and the winter and be able to shoot some of my own imagery in those seasons so I can use them because I know what I'm looking for a little bit. So, um, and then the critters I mentioned, I love those. Uh, and some of my favorite migratory birds. I learned from talking to the friends of the trail that the bird walk thing is a very big deal on the trail for people. And some Hyde Park residents told me that as well. They said, the, I go do the bird walk. So I included the birds. Um, and the other piece I can include in the paintings is, especially in the Hyde Park one, I can drop in captions to identify buildings and stuff, which I wasn't doing here. So um, so it's, it's this glass that I've told you about in the past. I brought samples here to show you. It's the same as in Waterbury. It's the same as in South Burlington. It's the same that I used in Denver, Colorado. So um, it looks like this. These are the, this is the glass sample for the Denver piece. It's very dusty. You can hold it. So I get I get 12 by 12 inch samples before I before I commit to it to make sure. Yeah, it is heavy. It's very, very powerful, uh, strong stuff. So we have some in we're LWI and Hyde Park or custom metal fabrications doing the metal work for us. Uh, we have some information now. We will not have footings that are dug. I think we're going to have a floating pad. We've learned more about that. John Higgins is helping us with that. Acme Glass is doing our glazing. I've worked with them in the past and so on and so forth. So that's all the just kind of subcontract element. Here's the general thing again. So let me show you, this is the two plan views, okay? We'll probably, I'd like to use the bottom one. Okay, so now let's look specific. So here's, here's like the design for the autumn one, okay? And you can see the bear, the Abenaki drum, the bald eagle. These are people bicycling along the trail in autumn. There's also a little weasel hidden in there. See, I like to have the animals so the kids can find them. Now, after some of these paintings, there's a, the covered bridge in there that's actually over in Cambridge, but I'm cheating a little bit. Um, but uh, but uh, the, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, well, well, we'll put it in there. So um, you can see I enhance the color. Oh, there's a there's a yellow warbler in there on the left side, hidden too. Another bird hidden. That's a migrating bird. Um, so and there's a ruby throated hummingbird also. I don't know if you can see that. See, these are hard to find. It's on purpose. So now you'll see what what I I drop in some images of my own paintings just to show you. I can actually paint like this. I can make my paintings look like this. So this is a little painting of mine. That's another little painting of mine that's another painting of mine okay so i can actually put my money put my my paintbrush where my mouth is okay um so here's the winter one um the left bottom image that i don't i just got off the internet yesterday i wasn't happy with the winter one and yesterday i actually ended up redesigning it and changing some stuff I, I, this will end up flowing a lot more than this and um I'd, I'd have to shoot a photo myself to replace that bottom left one. So, but that's basically that. You see the cardinal, the snowy owl, the black capped chickadee, a very well known winter bird. I put in the cat because I guess to vast, the grooming of the trails is a big deal. So, and this just to show you, that's one of my paintings. I can paint winter. So, yeah. now this, this one, this is the center panel. This is Hyde Park. Now imagine, see the way it's almost in four sections? It will be divided in four sections on the flat plane, curving 
like an arc, the top of the arc at the top, H and P are on one panel, Y and A on the next, D and R on the next, E and K on the next, so it just flows. And um, these are a couple images from the players. The turtle is a sacred Abenaki animal. It's actually on their, on their emblem, like their tribal emblem. So Chief Don told me to make sure to use that. You can see we have the, some of the very important buildings, the elementary school at the end of the street. So I wasn't sure about using the street. And then I just kept thinking, what is kind of unique about Hyde Park? And when you read the histories, is this tree-lined street Without, it's not a commercial street down the middle of the street. It's beautiful. And so this is a photograph I took of the street. And these are all photos I took of the building. So they're not photos, they're photos I took that give me the stuff I want to use. And there's the, you know, the tower of the, of the courthouse, which is critical to the, you know, the emblem of, of, of it. So and I, I have to say what I kind of love about this one is two things. It reminds me of sort of historic postcards. And it also reminds me of the cover of Abbey Road. So, <laughs> so, yes, it's, so it's the turtle instead of the beetles crossing the street. Or the barbershop quartet. Yeah. Yeah. I did shoot a bunch of photos in North Hyde Park. I almost got killed. Uh, you know, taking photos there. I didn't use a photo of the Grange yet, but I could. I could drop one in. I didn't. Um, so um, anyway, so I also like the idea of using that left photo is from Brigadoon. So that's my own little secret metaphor for Hyde Park is Brigadoon. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so then here's the here's the spring one, right? And so here you see an image of of, uh, uh, let's see if I can say her name, Aslins, Aslin is her name. She's a student at High Park Elementary School. That's a painting she did of a fox. Oh, yeah. And that's a Blackburnian wobbler, a wood duck, a moose, a canoe on Green River Reservoir, Chief Don, a photo I took of the image. And that little boy there on the right below Chief Don, that's Randy Hill. So, um, and this is just to show you paintings that I can create the flow of, you know, that kind of sense. Again, just a painting to give you an example. And then this is the summer one. Um, so there's another bit of an image nestled in the middle there from Hyde Park Elementary School student, River Otter Loon, Scarlet Tanager. I pointed these out before. Um, and that image in the purple, that's the only image I could find, and I don't know where I found it, I think in a book. That is the Hyde Park Railroad Depot. That's the actual Hyde Park Railroad Depot. So, um, and then these are just my paintings again to show you I can paint water. I really can do it. So I can make it look like that if we want to. And I can paint the animals. In fact, the turtle that was in the Hyde Park painting wasn't a photograph of a turtle. That was that turtle in the lower right here, which is a painting of mine that hangs in Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. So, you know, it was a painting of a turtle. So here's the budget. Um, we're over 40,000, as you saw, but it's the way it works. So the, the, the thousand, I guess, for the piers and the concrete, we're not gonna be doing if we're doing the floating pad. The metal work is the most expensive Piece. And this is LWI's bid. Um, they were very nice. John Higgins wanted us to use a particular size of vertical thing, and they were, anyway, they're using it and they kept their estimate as it was. This also includes some on site welding, which is part of the install that they're going to have to do for the, the angles of it. This is, I can't make it, I, I have to charge for doing my paintings. I mean, it's hundreds of hours of my work. So, it's cheap. That's cheap. Um, and then the um, and I'm not doing the paintings full size. I'm going to do them two thirds size. So what that does is allow me enough scale so I have room to manipulate the brush, but less expensive because I can use less paint. And it's you know I, you know so yeah as long as I have enough room to work. 
Um, the glass cost is a little bit less than 5,000, that's just for the glass. There's the glazing cost. And then the, the, digit, the photography of the paintings and the mastering them to do the glass, I'll do that pro bono because I know my way around it and I'm not gonna charge for that. So, um, and the setting up the glass, once the metal is installed, I'll do, and if I get some volunteers, that would be great. We, we can just do that ourselves. It's not a big deal. Uh, the other stuff, probably not. And then the one option is lighting. We could do some kind of solar up lighting out there and put them on timers so that you don't want them lit up at night and disturbing neighbors. That was a real consideration for us at Waterbury. But you could certainly have them during the winter months, for example, when it gets dark early, that they're lit for a couple of hours and so forth so people can see them glowing and it kind of looks beautiful at night, okay? So that's that. Um, so a couple additional notes. Um, I've been offered a show at River Arts in the late spring. I reached out to and talking to them with this, and they said they're in Morrisville, and they said, why don't you have a show here? So we're, I've, we kind of picked a date that we thought might coordinate with the installation of this, and um, I thought it would be nice to show the actual paintings that are here, and the other piece I'd love to do because I'm big into supporting young artists. And I know Aslan already, Penelope did the other little piece you saw, but Aslan, her dad said, you know, she wants to be an artist. She's only in elementary school. I think how cool it would be to include the artwork of the elementary school kids mm -hmm. in this show at River Arts. So there's a Hyde Park student show with my work. I just, I love that idea. So, um, G. Clay prints, we can do prints of the paintings. That's a whole nother thing. Um, and then we were talking about sign information. If there's signage, we did signage in South Burlington that talked about the threatened watershed because the Potash Brook is part of the, uh, the Minuski River watershed, which is threatened. We could really do it. We could do some signage here that calls out people who deserve a pat on the back for the hard work they did, but also calls attention to some of the NRC uh, uh, preservation issues, Abenaki, rail history, so on and so forth. It can become informational. Talk about Hyde Park, try to get people up to Hyde Park as well. It's something that does a little advertising for can gavel. Then well, the opening party should be a blast. So I did some things just to imagine what it would look like in the site. These are Photoshop mockups. The winter panel there is um, the older version. The new one I reworked literally yesterday um, is more uh, colorful. But you can see this is with the idea that it's basically a V form. That's why those two, the two at either ends are kind of shortened and distorted like that. And then the middle one is flat. So what I did was I is parallel to the trail. So it's like you're looking at the bottom of a V. It comes out, goes back, flat, out, back, or towards you, and then back. And so I went to either end for the trail and imagined what the approach would be like, like that. And so you get, what I loved about this is from certain angles, you get these things overlapping each other. So you can't really see it here because I didn't make them transparent. I can on Photoshop. But if you look at that more distant one, what would happen is through the distant one, you'll see the back panels through it. So you'll get this dynamism of the panels moving behind and in front of each other as you're moving down the trail. And that, without canting them the way we did in South Burlington, this kind of achieves a similar effect. It's that to me is just, that's like, that's when you get like an abstract jazz thing going on that, you know, and here you can see again, the kind of overlap you would get. This is coming from the other direction. Now we can place it anywhere. I placed it here because of least interference from background trees and also most greatest visibility as you're moving along the trail. Imagining in winter, this is who knows, as the sunlight has different angles, you do get this casting, will get the color cast on the snow like that. You see that little color on the snow. So, and, and if it's, um, if it's the sun is higher during the day, it'll be even brighter. I have an example of that in Denver for people who haven't seen it. So this is another one showing that kind of wonderful overlap you get. Uh, so what are the next steps? 
The next steps are gather more imagery, more photos along the trail during the autumn and winter, as I said, more student artwork, uh, you know, if we want more, uh, more from Hyde Park folks and families. If there's Hyde Park people, uh, I have an image of Governor Page in here. I don't know if you saw that. Um, so I did include a portrait of him in the artwork. Um, just as they did in Waterbury, included the general who founded the state police. So I thought that was important also since he is like the eminent Hyde Park former resident. So, um, but if there are other people that, you know, want to be in there, you know, um, or, or that you think should be in there, you know, I can adjust that. Uh, if we were in the Catholic Church in the Gothic period, you would just have the people who paid the most money made the biggest contribution, they would be in the artwork. But um, <laughs> um, so then I'll make the five paintings from the design that flow together, you know, that flow together, photograph the paintings, master them, submitted it, they make the glass, the pad is installed, the metal is fabricated and installed, the glass is glazed in the frames, we install the frames, we have a reveal party. And that's the next step. And there it is again, closer up, all of it kind of together. So you can see the flow of it together. I'm trying to see where Governor Page is in there. I know he's in there somewhere. Oh, yes, he's behind the E in Hyde Park. Yeah. So, um, and so that was the earlier version of winter that I dropped. And these are just, you know, if you haven't seen the other pieces, this is Waterbury, what it, these things look like glowing in the sun. This is South Burlington showing you what it can look like lit at night. And this shows you also on the middle bottom, this is in Denver, shows you the transparency looking through it, how you can see the train car and a parking structure on the two on the right. And then the one on the bottom middle, you can see how the color gets cast on the, this is not on snow, it's on a, like great concrete, so on snow it would even be more luminescent. Okay, and that is the whole thing. I think. Oh, I went fast. I talked fast. You're good. You're good. <laughs> so we have time for questions. I'll back up to to wait that to that. And uh, so I think at next steps we have to conclude design somehow. So the conclusion was the. Uh, probably the committee and the select board having a meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that needs to be for the grant purposes, but uh, they would have some uh, acceptance of the final design, which you've done tonight. And then we begin the next phase of ins right. install. Yeah. So the install has the same kind of needs, but it's more on the fundraising side. So Susan Bartlett has uh, more than once and sort of agreed to uh, make it very possible to fundraise. So I, I don't know if that means she's the fundraising chair or she's going to lead the way, but at least I know she's committed to making the install happen one way or the other. So that part of there's a lot of important parts and pieces that go with that. Uh, I don't think Hyde Park, other than the, other than the clock, I'm trying to think of other things the community, Hyde Park community has done. Uh, for this kind of like presentation of peace, that people, public peace, the clock was ordered by the select board for the courthouse, for example. Uh, the This installation is going to be done similarly with community crowdsourcing or however else that comes together. Uh, but we don't have a lot of, the, you know, it's just like, the, you know, from a, from a community spirit kind of thing, I think people will get behind this because we don't do it a lot. You know, it's like one of those once every 50 year things, potentially, you know, maybe it'll be more after this, but uh, some places are really into art installations all over the town. Uh, we're more about structures, sidewalks and roads and little kiosks and parking and stuff like that. So well, they haven't had an opportunity for a year and a half or better to get behind something. Yes, yeah, so I think it's a good outlet for that too. It's like a recovery, COVID recovery project, yeah. Now, I told, I had emailed you two and Susan, Michelle and you and Susan, about just some ideas in terms of funding because, and I don't know, 
I should mention those here or not. I think I think a broad brush would be fine because there's okay. all sorts of ways you can get at it. I mean, we have a budget, I right. would say, right? A goal. And right. How do you how do you pick at that? So I I was hoping to come in at forty thousand, you know, but with uh, the metal being close to twenty five, boom, we're done. You know, if I work for for nothing, but I can't. It's not fair to me. I'm already working for much. I'm already getting paid much less than the hours I do. But I do this because I love. You know, I really do. So, um, so here's a couple ideas. So, you know, we're not much over that forty thousand. I didn't build a contingency in this in case. You know, I mean, it's sixty. But you're using sixty. I, so. I think that's fair. Well, that, the, that time, gives, the that, timing and the variables that yeah. gives us a big contingency. So, yeah. so um, you know, it's some, an easy number for me. Fifty-two. Okay. So, yeah. um, so You're watching prices of metal, and it's going to hurt. Yeah, and they the kind of the way the more expensive it's going to be. So, so then that's one of the things they said is you know they built into their estimate if time material, goes back. material goes up. Um, um, so the couple of thoughts were, of course, grants from the Arts Council. But where I can contribute to it is, so I have to charge for my time making the paintings in the both the Waterbury and the Denver projects. The paintings were part of the deal. The Waterbury project, the two paintings that the glass are based on, hang in the lobby of the building. Um, what happened in Denver is the town of Westminster, who was funding this thing, was so excited about it, said, I tell you what, we want to buy the paintings for City Hall. And so what they did was they took their main conference room and the suite of paintings are in the conference room. So the four that you, the five that you showed us. Are got, well, uh, right there. So then each you'll, chop, you'll basically chop them into four. No, so those are five right there. Yeah. So those are I, yep. I, those are five paintings, right. so each of four panels. Right. So Same I make, job. so I make a paint. The left four panels is one painting, and then when I photograph it, I chop it into four imagery yep. to make each one a pane of glass. But you have one painting. Yep. So what one thing the town could do is basically say if you know if there are four or five people that buy you know get, contribute a certain amount you could say you're basically buying the painting and they get the painting so they're not just making a donation you know they're getting the paint they're buying a painting for it and and the money just i was thinking that you know from your presentation it's almost like a historical grant Maybe. you know it's almost like a preservation grant art project it's like a combo thing <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it's the, all the, the research that you did to, to try to capture a card. You could have a couple little ads. Whether I don't know if I saw logging. Logging was a big piece to the high card. I, yeah, I didn't include logging in this. In the history, there there were like so many mills. Yeah. But I didn't include any any of those mills in there. I didn't find imagery of them. I certainly could. Um, maybe I'm a little sore right now about all the trees that have been cut on my road, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, but I, I could for sure. Um, but I mean, I think that was, right, I was just thinking tweets. I'm just, I'm just thinking like, all of that stuff combined right. is, it's almost like a 50, 50. So you know, uh, but, but it's a nice way to entice people to make a larger yeah, contribution. They actually get I think that's the thing. Time. So then the other thing is that middle painting, the high park painting, which to me, I mean, I love all of them, right? And I, but I mean that one I did in the center that announces Hyde Park. It just it tickles me somehow. Just to make you feel good about it, and others as well. And uh, American science lives under Charles Paul, drove through town in one day on one of his travels throughout the country, hmm. and he named the top ten towns in the United States that he traveled in. Hyde Park was in there. Wow. Uh, all right. And I spoke volumes at the time. Yeah. So he was his correspondence traveling around. You to, yeah, you would do you that know, Sunday so morning. His personality mm -hmm. was there. Yeah. Every week he listened. Yeah. I used to listen to him too. So yeah. Is, yeah. So well, so what I was thinking on that middle image is man, there could even be like Hyde Park merch. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying that. But 
I would have a coffee cup with that on the side of it, you know, sure. or a t-shirt or whatever. I mean, it's just, or posters. We can easily do giclée prints of any of these. It was something I held off on doing for a long, long time. But, you know, paintings, when you're a painter like me, people have to have money to buy the paintings and people were requesting work. So now I offer giclée prints mm -hmm. and it's a way people can have a archival image of a painting of mine, but it's affordable. And we could certainly do that as another way of doing it. So, um, or but note cards or something. Yeah. Note cards, and with that middle image, yeah. I mean, like we have very, we have nothing to offer upstairs. For like the clerk's office, we have the town reporter, fishing guide. There's not much to take away if you come visit the town clerk, but this would be something that uh, definitely would get purchased. I would think. I mean, it doesn't. People want to have some of this stuff, whether they're visiting, whether they're snowbirds, whether they're permanent residents, people, I do, I do agree that there should be some exploration. That's what will get them up off the road to Fork and Cavill. They do have a, a little thing down there that says, if you want a, a reproduction or an image of this, come up to, come up to Fork and Gavel. <laughs> That'll have to be the new art shops. They, they close the cafe, so it's going to be a new business in there to sell yeah. So we'll have to come up. Exactly. Uh, anyway, so um, actually, when Westminster, Colorado, they ended up making G. Clay prints of that suite of six paintings for that glass. And one reason they did it was because uh, the head of city planning, basically the head administrator of the town, they did it first as a surprise retirement. He was retiring, surprise retirement party. For him. So when you retire, maybe. Yeah, right. 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 Get, get closer. Yeah. And you have a couple of meetings in this space, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there's plenty of room there for that. Too. None of this stuff on the wall really yeah. needs to be there. <laughs> we just had space. So, one other thing I want to say is when you started talking about floating slab. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My brain is running with ideas on what we, you know, depending on the shape of that, if we followed the shape, you know, V, V, flat, V, V, we could have like an imprinted map, embedded embossed map in the center section of the rail trail and the, we could do embossed imagery and the concrete. We could do a thing like we did in, Waterbury with the bricks, where people come and get, if we do a skin coat, people from High Park get to come. And the other thing I thought would be so cool, it wouldn't be visible in the winter, but would be so cool would be, are there poets here in High Park? Somebody could write a poem about the, you know, the experience sure. of the trail or sure, something. There's something in that yeah, we could, you we could have a, a ver poem, embed, I mean, all the kinds of things that could be embedded in this slab. Would be so we so tried to, uh, beautiful. We tried to incorporate the uh, rotating elementary school art displays down there somehow. Whether that was in the future kiosk or part of this, if we reserved a panel that was somehow replaceable, so to speak, with their artwork. Well, I know that one of the things Diane talked about was doing something with the kids' artwork and basically doing something like this that was one panel up by the school. Oh, okay. And so I could, you know, she and I have talked yeah, about that and about potentially consulting and doing something like that for them as an add-on to this. Yeah. So a floating pad would be just that, a cement pad that the Steel uh, metal would be bolted or somehow attached as opposed to sinking down. Tubes or foundation. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, I would just wonder about that. That's what the engineer's going to worry about. The engineer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think about it. They've got to worry about wind, force, you know, they've got to worry right. about stability. And the frost and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. You know, and um, that's why you were talking about something called ground screws. What, what, what Ron explained to me only recently because I was pricing out solitudes and poured concrete and so forth is that 
that in, and explains why it feels like that down there. The entire thing is a brownfield basically that's encased in cement. So you can't you can't pierce through it. Uh, you can't dig into it without major, major repercussions. So you maybe can put in ground screws or maybe it, the slab is just big enough and heavy enough that it doesn't, you know, it would have to be one, it would have to be one solid piece. There's two comments from Amy Olson. We got to read those. Definitely our poets in HP. <laughs> Library. Okay, do I respond to this? Or? No, she's listening, but uh, I just want to let her know. Yeah. So I just love that idea. You know, I think about what Liz and Andy have done, what they did that, that piece in Randolph and Slate where they slammed up what Sam blasted people's profiles. It's more involved and it's bringing somebody a different idea in, but you know, that idea of profiles of people in the town or something like that. But I love the idea of, of a poetry written by a local person that's, you know, in the concrete. Yeah, I think the, the, the takeaway, if you will, from people that are first time visitors, just don't even know the artwork is there, to people that intentionally go because they heard about it, or people that stopped by once and didn't absorb it all but want to come back, is to have either the kid component, which you're talking about, or the, um, the Easter egg hunts where you have hidden things in those panels. But you're going to have to, I think you're still going to have this, I don't know, the Vermont Arts Council uh, description of the project. I don't know, you guys, I know a lot of our grants with uh, stormwater projects and some highway projects, they always have, or they're starting to have the recognition of the fund funder. Yeah. And it's like just some place where people, oh, that's a standalone display of something. I should go look at it. And on there, it talks about the history and yeah. uh, look for the little hidden things, all that kind of stuff, so that people can get over the edge of just not driving by and not really looking because they don't understand what's going on potentially, but they have this little helper table or kiosk or something, something, something like that. I know if you drive up to the Brown Church in Richmond, they went to great extent to figure out how to make a permanent uh, informational board on the on the round church that's outside on display. It sits at like an angle like this to shed water, but it's totally in place with the polyurethane or something. That's what we did in South Burlington. And it, it tells people if the guide isn't there what the church is all about and the 16 sides and all that business. So I think that's what I'm thinking about here is to have a so I don't have an image yeah. of the of, of the sign in South Burlington, but it's exactly what we did. So I yeah. I ended up going and working with somebody at um, the feds, the it's like NRCS or whatever. It's the it's the federal agency that oversees water quality and does environmental preservation and stuff. And so I worked with her and we prepared copy. And we actually got two grants, one from um, whatever the local bank. Uh, up there is and also there's a there's a champlain <laughs> byway trail signage like group and they f they fund but they also have to have their graphic designers kind of oversee it because they want everything consistent so right. we did a thing that was about the threatened watershed but it also talked about the history of the art and stuff and it's exactly what you're yeah. talking about it's a polyurethane has some imagery in it and it's slanted. Yeah, no, it, it, see, let's say we do get the um, some support from the Vermont Historical Society or some historic likes the concept of the merger of the two um, purposes here. Having having that information, not just from a grant funder's perspective, but to give people like how did this happen? Answers. A lot of people say how much did it cost or whatever, but having the whole project description on there is really helpful for people to get it why it's here we'll get that question what are you doing that for you know that kind of and then at least it's there for people to read if they're really interested in, and we have some recognition of everybody dan's bio or whatever just to tie it all together i think without a sign it's not complete almost yeah I think from from a visitor perspective yeah. it's not complete the stories behind the imagery are really fascinating and wonderful too and so even if you can't fit them on the sign it could 
lead you to a website or something where there's more info or brochure. Oh, yeah, the QC code thing on there. Yeah, yeah or people. brochure uh, that has a little more detail yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, just a brochure, an explanation, right? So you could have a, several pages on just one table. Yeah, just because it, it becomes like a not a history and a little bit of a natural history lesson about right. the type of yeah, could be part of the, the, uh, the dollars to, to raise to get something like that published and sell the book, the booklet. You know. We did do a small brochure for Waterbury, remember? Yeah. Yeah. We did that because partly because part of the program for me there was they said, we have school groups come, and so it's they sit in this garden, and it's really nice to be able to point out imagery that, to them and use it actually as an educational tool. And this may have some of that same effect, you know, possibilities. From a from a what's next step. So this particular installation, the five suppose takes up a certain amount of space. There's a little concrete, this is like a quadrant of the trailhead parking, because you have roads that make up four pieces. The brownfield piece has a, a background a fence. I don't know if you right. saw it. Yeah, yeah, you can see it in this. So there's a there's a requirement for the redevelopment of this site, not only to not go down with huge foundation. Yes. We can do it, but it's an extra cost to remove the soil. Uh -huh. That's why we're trying to think of some ground uh, There's also a requirement to have a background fence, which I'm, I'm, I'm talking about background now is that the installation's up. And they gave us permission for a temporary fence, which is there now. It's a wired, mm -hmm. large panel wire fence that keeps people uh, from going into the woods there. Do you see any way to, to use the foreground and background of the installation, or do you foresee that this should be forever grass and let the installation sit by itself in that plot. I'm not sure so I understand So you have, you have that one quadrant, which is a long rectangle. Right, of the grass. Right, so the installation is in sort of the middle of that. Two, th th two, two thirds back a little bit. Yeah, left. right. There's a pad right. to, to the very left yeah. side of the that, which is a future bike rack potential. There was right. ideas for that area to be used for picnic or sitting or resting or a lot of trails have stretch structures where you can lean on it and stretch so do you, from an artist perspective do you see any use of either the foreground or background of that within that rectangle area so i Any structures or tables or so i i was down there having a sandwich before i came up here and I thought, boy, it'd be nice if there were a place to sit and have my sandwich. I mean, it's a way, it's a way that you invite people into experience the art too. It's amazing how people can almost not see things sometimes. And then if they're sitting down there, they look up and go, oh, you know, so I do think I love the idea of, you know, places for people to stretch, to sit, to hang out. A whole other design type question, yeah. but I, I'd rather work with. Dan to come up with sort of the best placement. If you have a, if you have a bench that's facing the art right in the front, like on people like a lot, a lot of times you see a piece of art and there's a chair or a bench right in front of it, or do you set them off to the side to get that angle you're talking about? You know, all those things. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's something. I I think a bench facing towards the art would be great. If it's not right in front of it, that'd be great. You know, it's high enough. The idea of it being high is is really twofold. One is Michelle's concern about kids swinging on it. And I don't think most kids can reach eight feet. You can make it higher. But the other thing, and we know this from Waterbury, is when it's up, the, the luminosity against the skylight is really beautiful. So that's a reason to have it high. You get more visibility. Um, so then having benches is not going to be a big problem. Side to the side. To more even in front, even, you know, if it's farther away, but in front, but facing it, then people, it's almost like a museum. They get to sit and look at it. Um, you know, um, I pulled it back from that wire fence just in case, let's say people are there in the early morning and they want to step behind it to see the sun coming up behind it, you know, because the sun comes up from the kind of high park side. 
um, you know, if you're looking at it, the sun will be coming up over your left shoulder. Uh, in the summer. Here. Yeah, in the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, the winter doesn't make a difference. Um, so, um, all right. well, so but there's a lot more, of flexibility, but I love the idea of other stuff yeah, being there. There's more, there's more being considered. Be, yeah, no, I think that makes it, you know, really makes it a destination too. They could say, let's meet for lunch at the, at the glass, you know, so. Yeah, I think this can inspire a whole lot of other activities, imagery, reasons to go up into the nice cool. village. Is that what you're saying? Nothing on it. Oh, Amy said an ice cream bike. That's it. An ice cream bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's right. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. Or I can also see, you know, you're talking about imagery, and I was thinking about Waterbury and how you hit, you hit little, little tiny etched images in those stones in Waterbury. I could see it even as just a temporary art project or community project where some of the imagery in your railroad craft here and the paintings, like the turtle or the drum or the the train could be subtly hidden around the village of Hyde Park as a, a uh, you know, a scavenger hunt kind of thing. And uh, like we did with our, we did a history walk as part of Better Connections a while back. And <clears throat> there were signs and things around town that told the story of different things. So I could see even just to like to try to do things, not to do something for a minute, but we could do something, a trial thing where we take imagery and stories from this panel and say to learn more, do the loop around the village. And it could, you know, have we could have little stations where people could learn more about some of this imagery or something. Yeah. You know, my mind goes a million miles an hour about all the possible, you know. Ways that we could get people to do that. Well, I think that ties in with the with the panels themselves, which are historical to a certain degree. With the history walk, which yeah. we, I'll show you the history walk signs after the meeting, yeah, just to so get an idea of that project. Okay. I think there were seventeen stakes in the ground with an image and then a description of the image, and people had to check off all seventeen to get a prize. Yeah, they, I think they got like a. We got a gift of Five dollars yeah. or something at the But if you haven't seen that was images, I can show you before you leave. So I mean, we could just play with that yeah. idea and build it, you know, using the imagery and story in this. I think that gets back to the original grant concept, which was the the connection to me. Yeah. 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 Well, um, are there about um you mentioned some things like the Hyde Park, North Hyde Park image, and myself, just I don't know if you're thinking about whether to do that or not. I think it would be nice to do some connection to North Hyde Park so that there's, you know, it's, it's more about the larger mm -hmm. town or something, whether it's if there's a, and you talk about not doing logging, but you hadn't done logging or mills. If, if That's huge. Yeah. Out there, like I said, maybe the North Hyde Park is a mill connection or the Grange oh. connection or something. But I, I really should it, put in the Grange. Just a little, a little something in one of those. I think would be a good not to. I'll put the Grange. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, for sale. What is that? The Heath. Oh. The, the Heath. But it's just, you know, it's a historical reference. Mm -hmm. Again, stories about what used to be me and all that kind of stuff. So I'll make sure to include that mill in, in the Grange. I did go up and shoot photos there. So did you hear me when I said that uh, Thursday? It's the twenty third. Yeah, I guess. So uh, Thursday night at the Grange, they started doing uh, square dances. Uh huh. At seven o'clock on every Thursday for the rest of the summer. So that's, so that's the first time we've actually had a relatively high use. You know, forty or fifty people stomping wow. on the floor up there. I think they even come in dress. If they need a caller, you know, Bruce and Bruce and Beth who have Maplewind Farm there where you live. Yeah. I, they sold their place in Huntington. I don't know yeah. if they moved into Richmond. Uh, but Bruce is a very good caller. Is he? <laughs> so <laughs> okay. 
Um, the other question I had, Dan, is just in terms of the glass imagery <clears throat> on a cloudy day. Um, can you just speak to how well those images show up, or you know what it's what the experience is like with the glass when it's yeah, I have some I have some photos on my website, or if I go back, um, because I've shot photos at Waterbury on a cloudy yeah, yeah. day. Um, but they do show up. I mean, I don't know, they don't need the luminescent yeah. backlighting. Um I don't know how, how to show them to you. Well, that's all right. I was just curious. I know just personal people who haven't seen well, I've seen Waterbury a lot. Right. Yeah, but, um, so, so let's it's see. It's still very, and my point was just that it's still very colorful and interesting, even on a cloudy day versus a bright sunny day when it's shining. I think I can probably bring up Cafe and, and here. Oh, your my computer keeps trying to log into your Xfinity Wi Fi, and I wanted to stop doing that. And it just interfered. I was going to bring images up, and then it just tried to log into the Xfinity Wi-Fi. Have a look in a second. So I can just open this. Boom. All right. So now if I go to. I did like the idea, although I don't know how it would be in Rainbow and I don't know what the costs are of that idea of some solar lighting or you know some way to kind of illuminate it a little bit even in the start four to, to eight or four to seven hours i don't know if yeah. people will go down there in the evening anyway maybe it's not worth it but or a couple of hours i think yeah is there a way for these folks to see this uh you can send it to me i can just swap here Okay. So here's just a photo of Waterbury on a very gray day. Yeah. Well, I think you know, just my comment about the, the solar lights, I don't know if it would be worth it, and that might be something that would be uh, later they, on. I think the capacity of solar lights without hard wire is getting more affordable and easy to do than it ever has been. So I think having the right application with a timer uh, will, would be easy yeah. to do. I just don't know how you would actually attach it with the right angle and all that stuff. So you don't have like a hot spot. You know, you almost want it far enough away so that you get a, right. a broad, yeah. even or you know, even spread. I don't know if that's offsite or if that's somewhere around the edges, you know. Have a little LED strip around each panel that lights. Uh, there's lots of that, lots of options. I think I just don't know how this. Well, again, yeah. and, and we don't know cost either, and that wasn't in perfect. They're cheap. Here, so they are they now? I I was just looking at, up looking them up, and I was surprised how inexpensive they were. So, yeah, I'm gonna try. See if this works because I, 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 for some reason, even though I'm on there, it's not letting me send the email. That's anyway, you guys saw it. Who knows yeah. if anyone's out there anyway? But well, I think it's a great concept, man. I'm really excited about it. Oh, good. <laughs> One of your pictures made it almost look like you could see it from Route 15. Is that true? You can start to see it. Uh, boy, I don't know. There was a crossroads. So that, let me open up the PowerPoint again. Uh, oh, I'm on my, on my computer. <laughs> so we'd have to go back to the views. The crossroad, those are the cro that's the road that runs right behind, parallel to the trail. So if you're standing in the parking lot of the trail where the field is, there actually is a road behind them. So that's the little road you're seeing. Oh, Route 15 is over the hill. Oh, is it? So Route 15 is here, but because this is kind of up over and then drops down from here, you wouldn't be able to see it. Unless we like put it 150 feet in the air. Um, yeah. 
so that's the one I'm just I like them all you know it's like I I'm I'm the 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 winner one I have it's when I'm painting it that it's going to zing for me you know and I can paint, I love painting architecture actually in Westminster and in Waterbury we're in Waterbury you have that little bit of the train station and in Westminster, I used a bunch of historical buildings and, you know, I teach linear perspective and stuff. So I love doing it. So they, they look architectural, but they're also kind of painterly. Yeah. So I, I love that. Um, so, but there's just something about this particular one. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I know, Dan, it wasn't in your purview for this particular design project, but as you were working on this, did you have any concepts or ideas that came to your mind about the other end of the the, the other crossing? You know, the other street crossing where where the trail is um, at all? Anything is. I I didn't really. I mean, the only thing that occurs to me if I were to do something there that I the 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 in that initial thing with the arch and the disc on it, but it's oh, like yeah. the tower in South Burlington. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't choose to follow through on this one because I thought this one works better, you know, work better for this. And I, I also, part of this concern ultimately also is talking in vast. Anything we put on the trail has to allow the groomer to get to. Right. But you called it. That especially since that's like two roads crossing, you could make something that's kitty camera. That's just, but I'm, I'm, that's only in this moment I'm yeah, thinking yeah. about it. No, I, but I was so focused on this. I didn't, I showed Ron before you guys got here. The number, to see if you're not gonna, you're gonna think, boy, this guy doesn't have a life. Um, I, sh I, I, I managed to um, put, put on my, I, it took like two hours to do it yesterday, but I transferred from my desktop computer to this computer, the Hyde Park folder of just my working folder of files. Oh, my gosh. Two hours. oh it's 29 gigabytes. <laughs> so this is the number of wow. files. Wow, yeah. These are all the structural mockups. And then within there is a folder are subfolders of mock-ups. These are just the mock-ups for those paintings, how many yeah. iterations it takes. Wow. And some of these, this, they're one and a half gigabytes because it's a Photoshop that I have to do something like that. I'm taking multiple photos that I have taken. I, I take the fork and grab a gravel one. I'm taking that photo, I'm taking multiple photos, I'm cropping them, I'm distorting them, I'm changing the color of them, I'm doing all kinds of things to them. I'm dropping them on, and then I'm doing various filters that are unique to that particular layer. And that's true for each of those. For, so for those guys, the barbershop quartet, notice how the trees go around their heads? Mm -hmm. That's like hours of work just to make that happen. You know, yeah. so, um, or just the color of the shadows crossing the road. And there were cars parked on that street. They're gone now. I had to take those out, you know. So, <laughs> but that's once I get the design out of the look, you know, yeah. I can go through multiple designs and just hours of playing so they can get it to there. So, that's what I can't explain. I mean, when, when people sit and watch me, it kind of like it's happening so fast that it looks magical because I've just done it enough. But it's that thing, it's the same thing that happens when you're painting. You're, it's just flowing through you really, really fast. Yeah. You know, it's like playing an instrument, you know. But hours, you know, look at that. So yeah. Well it looks amazing. So um, right now I'm, I'm it's okay, I guess, to say this. Just the form of it or paintings. I love it. <laughs> it's so it, you know. When you see something and you know the work pays off and it just starts it's singing. Yeah. You know, it makes you really want to work. So, you an awesome job. It's got a lot of uh, energy, I think, in it that the community is going to have a lot of fun with going forward.
the question of how do we get this done and the schedule is I, I can see that being not a small project. Yeah, it will take time, especially again to raise the money and then yeah. Uh, so it's going to take time to make for me to make the paintings, yeah. but you know, but that's I can do that. And once those are done, the rest of the turn the manufacturing turnaround is pretty fast mm -hmm. because we kind of have our ducks in a row for that. So, um, it so just, from a grant process perspective, do we like the select board is in the in that process to close this. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're, I think they're trying to do a special meeting on the 6th of October uh, on the budget, but they practically could have a quick recommendation from the committee that to accept the final design and begin, begin installation final design. What do you, what do you mean? You said you have some more stuff to do, but. Well, I, I just have to make the pages out your <laughs> from the design work to the next. Well, what I, what I like to do, would do would, would want to shoot for photographs in, in autumn, but that's happening right now. Yeah. Winter, I would just save that painting for last, so I can shoot some photographs to work from on my cell. You know, I'm imagining ice flows on the river and stuff. Like well, I know you're blowing like an artist. I'm trying to make <laughs> great point. Say, no. Ed, you are done with design. Now let's get moving to. Installation. I think, you know, well, I, I think what I would suggest is that you you get the this just if this design is final in time, if there's some tweaking like a few other little imagery or the yeah. signage or things that you want to add in, and that happens after you close out the grant, that's fine with us. Yeah. Okay. But if um, I would want you to get would want you to get it nailed down in terms of what you want to put out there as your your fundraising imagery because you're going to want to share the design with people to get them excited about contributing to it in some way, whether it's local residents or you know businesses or whoever. Um, so that will take some time. So you know, depending on how fast, I wouldn't I wouldn't go to contract with Dan to make paintings until you have money to pay <laughs> you know that you're going to have some yeah no it, right i was just with the little tweaking of getting a few more photos or doing to me that's almost like the design installation phase right now that'll happen i mean that'll happen fast and that'll happen as part of doing the paintings so i mean i can start working well, i don't want to keep this out i'm trying to break i'm done with design i can start i'm trying to break the yeah. design and say we're 95 yeah. percent there yeah and that's what you need for the grant to yes. be closed out basically the only the only design piece that's left i mean in terms of working in a little bit of the image that's what will happen in painting so my part of design is done okay. the, the only part of design that and in terms of putting images out there the only one that i would be careful about is the winter one with that lower left farm in the sunset because i just got that off the internet i don't I don't have permission to use that. It may be a stock photo, I could just from the Vermont tourist agency, but anything else doesn't matter. From the design standpoint, the only thing outstanding is the slab. So that's an engineering slab piece. The rest of the design is the, the, the metal work, they have their specifics, they have, you know, their detail, we, you know, yeah, as a no, used water. So we're, we're kind of ready to go. Yeah. Then that's from, you know, once you, if you can get a basic answer on the slab cost and engineering, whatever you need from uh, well, we're, we're trying to make a choice between slab and ground screws. Ground screws are an alternative to sauna tubes and other things that go down, oh, I see. but they don't remove soil. Gotcha. So whatever choice we make, whatever the slab design is, or whatever the screw setup is, for depth and how big the thing is. The, the final approval is actually with A&R, with the Brownfield program. So we need to, we do need to finish that because we, that, that finishes the design and the artwork will change slightly to, for, through production, really. So. Well, it, well, the artwork will change through production, but not as a, 
not really from a design standpoint. No, 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 no. no. I'm but, a couple but, of different images and how you right, paint. But that it's so, a, those are part of final. And, and in terms of the structure's attachment to whatever the foundation is, that would be the same, I think, whether it's a ground screw or a floating slab. Okay. Because it's going to be, you know, pin bolts epoxied into the concrete, drilled concrete, either way. So either way, it's going to happen. There's going to be a some kind of concrete with a with a metal foot that will have to drill and bolt into, basically. Yeah. So yeah. that's the. Same. But I copied you in that email to John because I thought that <laughs> you and in some ways. You need to be a part of the conversation with him as much as me or, or the yeah. town. So, so we want to get all the statements, that's why. Yeah. So, but I'm ready to go whenever, you know, whenever Susan can, you know, whenever you guys are ready to approve and get money or whatever. Well, let's see, so. let's see if we can nail the foundational question down by the 6th of October as a goal. Mm -hmm. And then if that all happens and we can close. The grant. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I forgot what our deadline was. Probably back in August. No, no. I we have extended the final. Report. I think we extended it to either September thirtieth or October thirtieth. I'll have to look when I get back to the office. But um, you're not late. No. And just, you're fine. Just remind. Just remind me of the details. I will. When you get back there, I, I have it too, but I just. Can't and there's two potential grants, right? Yes. So. There's a, a, a be eligible for another and an infrastructure grant, and then. This fall, or excuse me, this winter, um, the state will have the Better Places funding, yes. which is a crowdfunding campaign that might be a bit for this. So yeah. I think that's a lot of potential to be a bit for it. We're, I only say might be because today slash we haven't developed all the guidelines yet. <laughs> so I don't know yet where it's going to look. And it's all being administered by Commerce and Community Development, not at our shops. So, yeah. But Anyway, but we're working with them. So yeah, yeah. I see the little flyers come out from time to time. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank thank you. you for coming. Yeah, you're right on time. I had six fifteen on the agenda. Well, good. <laughs> it was okay. To make your approval. Yeah. Okay. That would be a great T-shirt. Just that picture right there. Oh, yeah. We could hire a merchandiser to okay. check this out. Yeah. I want a coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Let's sign out of this.